Typically in a website or user interface design, we have a lot of design elements and it's not uncommon for them to share a style, whether it's a simple color or a drop shadow or something even more complicated like a reflection. Uh, it is not unusual that to provide design consistency throughout your design, you need things to match. So what Sketch provides us with is if we have a style applied to something, uh, in this case, these icons are all just white. Uh, I can come over here to the inspector with an object selected and I can create a new shared style from the appearance of this object. So when I create a new shared style, it's going to take everything from there down. The opacity, the blending, fills, borders, shadows, etc, etc. And it's going to save that so I can reuse it. So I'm going to create a new shared style and I'm going to call it plain white icon. Now when I do that, I could then go and select all of my other icons. I did the shortcut command A there, and I can apply that plain white icon style. Now what that means is if I make a change, it's going to change all of them. But I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to make another style with the same icons. And I'm going to name this, uh, let's say, letterpress where we're going to make them look indented on the page. So because I selected all and I created a letterpress uh, style, that letterpress style gets applied to all of them and they are now going to sync with one another when I make a change. So I'm going to zoom in here on this icon. And with this icon selected, being that it's that same letterpress style as all of the other icons, if I make a change, like let's say I change this to black, see that? They all synced. Every icon here, all 339 or so. So I'm going to lower the opacity of this fill, go down to maybe 30. Uh, I'm going to go to inner shadows, and I'm going to create an inner shadow here that makes it look sort of indented into the page. There we go. Maybe turn the blur down a little bit, give it a nice sharp shadow. There we go. And then I'm going to give it a traditional shadow, but the traditional shadow I'm going to make white. So it gives it a little bit of a highlight, and I'm going to push that down a smidge so it looks like there's light being cast that's casting that shadow and casting the lightness along these top edges here. And I'm going to bring down the blur of that just a little bit just to keep it consistent with the, with the sharp, hard light. There we go. So now that I've done that on this one, it's done it on all of them. They're all in sync with one another. And what's really cool, too, Remember how I had that plain white icon version? Let's say, for instance, this icon, I wanted to demonstrate a, a hover state for when the user mouses over it or touches it. I can change the style of this, and it instantly switches. doesn't affect any of the other ones. So I can use these to create different versions of the same icon. And by creating those different versions, they won't affect one another if I don't want them to. The other cool thing is if I copy and paste one of these into another document, like this document here, it does bring over the style. Not just the appearance of the style, but the style itself. So if I go and grab a few of these and copy and paste them over, as I do that, they are still connected to one another because they share the same style. And being that that's the case, if I make a change to one of them, just like before, it changes all of them. So it's not too late for me to do that. So working between documents is even a little bit easier. However, if I make a change here in this document, it does not affect the other document. Uh, these shared styles live within the document that you're currently editing and not anywhere else. Uh, it goes between pages. So if I created a second page to this document, it would sync those styles from page to page, but it would not sync from this entire document here to this entire separate document here. So hopefully you guys like this tutorial. Uh, it's a really useful tool of Sketch. It's a tool that was available in Sketch 2 that has been really refined in Sketch 3, much easier to work with now. And uh, if you guys like this tutorial, please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to get these icons, head over to LearnSketch.com and uh, you can buy them from the store. All right, guys. See you soon.